The healthcare detective Frank Lally has written a book for Simon and Schuster about how to get affordable health care called Your Best Healthcare Now. It's available online, in store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade and the former editor of Money and George magazines. Hi, Frank. Have you been detecting? I have, yeah. I actually spent a couple of days uh, doing some reporting on this and you know, everybody's talking about healthcare, and I, I hope what we do this uh, this time around here is get to the real bottom line of what's happening with healthcare in this country. I, I think everyone's focused on President Trump's attempt uh, to kill the Affordable Care Act in the courts, and that's rightly so. They should be, because the courts, if they go along with President Trump, they'll kill the Affordable Care Act without a Republican plan to replace it. In fact, it, and this is astounding, without a Republican plan to have a plan to replace it. No plan, guys. So more than 20 million people would lose their health insurance. And over 50 million more with pre-existing conditions would be in danger of losing their health coverage too. And quick, quick very quickly. So John Roberts' Supreme Court has knocked down two attempts to get the Affordable Care Act scrapped as unconstitutional. And experts on the left and on the right say it's highly likely the Roberts Court will reject this weak third lawsuit, even though Trump's Department of Justice, his own Department of Justice, is arguing for it. But anyway, we can relax a little bit, take a deep breath, okay? I think we're going to be okay this year at least because the experts say the suit will bounce around undecided for a year or maybe more with no real impact on the Affordable Care Act or your insurance. So you can take a deep breath. Meanwhile, people are overlooking the big change in health care that the Trump administration is actually making. It's transforming Medicaid from providing free health care to the poor for the past 50 years to requiring the poor to work and to pay to get health care, to see a doctor, to get their medicine, work and pay. So there's a woman named Selma Verma, and she's running Medicare and Medicaid. She says requiring the poor to work to get health care is for their own good. She says work will make you healthier. Now, I'm, I'm really sorry to say this, but to me, that rings too close to the infamous Nazi slogan, work will set you free. Jill, do you, do you know anything about Verma? You know her, any yeah, of her background? But she's been, yeah, but she has been around for a couple of years, and she, wasn't she Pence's person or something? You, 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 exactly. you, you, you have talked about her in the past, and your opinion of her hasn't changed. So, <laughs> I think it's gone down, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, she's a protege of, of, of Mike Pence, um, and, and she came up with a very tough Medicaid plan in Indiana. Right. When he was the governor out there and President Obama banned her work requirement. He called it ineffective and inhumane and out it went. But President Trump has handed her all of Medicare, all of Medicaid. And one of the things she did right away is loudly promote her Indiana plan, which, by the way, has knocked 25,000 people off Medicaid in that state because they either didn't pay or couldn't afford to pay her new fees for health care. Worse, she's urged all the governors to request Affordable Care Act waivers from her to copy her original work plan. So far, Verma has okayed work plans in eight states and seven more are about to uh, apply. So nearly all are, are red states, virtually all. And they've got high numbers of poor families. So Jill, uh, you, you're following me so far. Are we ready to talk about Maybe the work requirements that that mm -hmm. uh, that Verma wants. Uh, we can definitely sense? talk about that. But what I'm trying to figure out first is where 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 is this actually? Where is it actually? Is in, in other is, words, she's she's giving waiver after waiver to the states, and then the states are drawing up these plans. And we'll get to exactly where uh, where they are in implementing it uh, in a minute. But uh, okay, she, one state after another is uh, asking for a waiver from the Affordable Care Act that allows them to impose work requirements and, and then fees. Does it, yeah, and, fees. and then do and the then, courts get involved? Then the courts get involved. We're, okay, so we're going to get to that in a <clears throat> nanosecond. Okay. But here, here are the rules. Here's what 
under these work requirements, here's what needs to happen. So people from like age 19 on up uh, need to be earning no more than twelve to $17,000 a year. And they must work or seek work or volunteer 20 hours a week. And they have to pay between $1 to $15 in monthly premiums depending on their income. Now, what if you can't afford the premiums, the 15 bucks or the 10 bucks? Essentially, tough luck. Verma says the poor need to have skin in the game, as if their own skin isn't enough. In addition, the poor must report their income or efforts to work to the state each month online. <laughs> you can't phone in the information without taking your calls. Yeah, but you if you don't have a computer, right, you don't have a computer. You you and and if you don't have a computer, that's on you. Right. Uh, it doesn't matter. You have to fill out these state forms online. And these rural areas, and we've noted this before. In these rural areas, the libraries don't have computers. Right. But anyway, it's on you. You need to find a way to fill out these state forms. Just by as a contrast, in Blue, New Jersey, Medicaid patients only need to verify their low incomes once a year by mail. <laughs> no online stuff. Anyway, under Verma, if you fail to work enough or pay enough, you get booted off Medicaid for at least six months. So if you're getting treated for a chronic condition or let's say you need medicine like insulin to live, you can apply for a waiver online. <laughs> you see, that is a nice theme that runs right through this. And the, there are work exemptions. Let's, uh, as a matter of fact, there are work exemptions for the sick. There are work exemptions for disabled, full-time uh, students, pregnant women, and primary family caregivers. Still, roughly two-thirds of people on Medicaid have to work to get health care under Verma's rules. So, Jill, out of this mess, do you sense any good news? That is blocked in the courts. I mean, this is just the usual. This is the yep. usual. Uh, Bingity bang. Yeah, but <laughs> it, okay. Except that, and I'm I'm sorry to be like this, but yeah. the the whole system is designed to basically say I'm not just talking about medicine. Anything is designed to say horror, horror, horror. I'll sue you. Block. And nothing gets done, but money gets spent. And meanwhile, people actually sit in places where they're supposed to deliver services underfunded. So well, I don't, I don't particularly see any, you know, I, I don't see any news here, but that's just me. Well, the, I mean, it, you're right in the sense of what is the, what is the good news, but it, look, it, at least these things are being blocked. You're right. The federal court is striking, striking them down. Uh, an Obama appointed judge, uh, in Washington, DC just blocked a Kentucky plan that would have cut 95,000 people from Medicaid. That's good news for those 95,000. Plus, an Arkansas plant was also knocked down, same judge, that actually had dumped 18,000 people before the judge ruled. So it's good news for those people. They can, they can get their health care again. Right. Uh, and, and more importantly, it, it, these were resounding uh, slapdowns, so takedowns. The, the judge all but laughed off Verma's claims that the plans would be, quote unquote, fiscally sustainable. And her other claim that, quote unquote, you know, we're going to help low income people rise out of poverty. The judge said, look, there's no proof of either claim, no proof. And he stressed, and here's a really important point. The Medicaid law is meant to provide health care not to help train people to work. That's the basic rule. But look, guess what? Two days after the judge ruled, Obama, Obama, Verma, okayed a work plan for Utah that's even stricter. Now, in, in, November, in November, last November, Utah voters approved Medicaid for people making just over the poverty line. That's roughly $35,000 for a family of four. <laughs> but good old Verma, is allowing Utah's Republican lawmakers to ignore the voters and only cover people making up to the poverty line. That's $25,000 for a family of four, not $35,000. Plus, they have these work requirements. <laughs> They're stuck with the work requirements. So essentially, to hell with the people, you know, the voters of Utah. I mean, who cares? What Verma wants, Verma is getting. So as you might imagine... These moves are actually making a lot more enemies for Verma than friends. She is quite unpopular. And, and apparently that upsets her. 
So according to insiders, she's spending millions of taxpayer dollars on Republican-connected PR firms to write her speeches, book her on TV, and get her favorable media stories. <laughs> now, this is all this in despite the fact that her agency has a 200-person communications team and doesn't need outside consultants for Verma alone. Ha. But Verma says, and she swears this, she says, hey, I am not wasting any taxpayer money polishing my personal image. Then again, Verma also swears that she's making poor people healthier with policies that she knows will prevent tens of thousands from seeing a doctor or affording their medicine. And to top it off, she's working for a president who wants to take away health care from tens of millions of people. So, <laughs> so Jill, and, yeah. yeah, go ahead. All right, well, I'm going to ask you a question. Sure. Okay. Do, do you know what the two words that the public uh, uses most often right now to describe President Trump and his administration? Uh, no. Aggressive and mean. Okay. <laughs> so that's where we are. I, I think your point is absolutely well taken. Here we are scrambling around in the courts uh, to stop things uh, rather than actually taking positive steps that would be accepted by the American public and actually help people. Yeah, but, um, but again, it's not just in health care. And it's not just in healthcare, but but this healthcare this healthcare business is very important. I mean, the healthcare business is really important, and what is uh, I, I couldn't agree more. And what is most important, in my view, personally, is people. The actual people who are involved need to understand, not because this person is, or this administration is aggressive and mean, and these situ these people are good and kind and fuzzy, whoever. They have to understand the parameters of what's, you know. See, are of, you being helped or are you being hurt? That's a very good question. Yes, but... And when, but, you, but, when, when you're dealing with Medicaid and you're talking about 20, 25, 20 percent of uh, the American public is on Medicaid... Uh, and and are these policies helping you? I mean, do you get do you get what you need people, when you need it? Yeah, and, I, and I but, mean, re requiring you to do backflips uh, to get work and to seek work and fill out state forms, and if you don't fill out the form, you get bounced off your health care. Is that actually a no? Is that actually but a good again, thing for it, this country? Again, that. I, I, if, if, if precedent is anything to go by, you put something like that out, it gets struck down, and then it's not covered, and, you, you know, another impasse, mm -hmm. and you move on to the next ludicrosity. Yeah. So, I, I what, what, so what I'm saying, again, mm -hmm. not about health care mm -hmm. per se, and we're going to run out of mm -hmm. time, but what I'm saying is that particular paradigm, that model for getting things done – need some work and people who actually vote need to understand not the uh, focus grouped PR spun little astronaut food tang version of a headline, but it's like, no, this is what it means. And the, really the best way to find out is to actually be in the system or have to deal with the system. And what I think is always staggering is how actual people have to confront and manage this stuff rather than how it's covered. You know, like four or five stories, I'm obviously under-reporting, right. burble to right. the surface. But meanwhile, you got zillions of people who are dealing with these dysfunctional arrangements in real time. Well, that's all true. And I think it's a consequence of not understanding the job of president to represent all the people, not just some people, who would be applauding having those people actually go to work to get their health care um, because it's all it's their fault that they're poor. That appeals to a minority in this country. But if you rule for the minority, you're hurting the rest. That's the bottom line of the Trump presidency so far. And I don't see it getting better, Jill. It's That's not going to get better because, about. well, well let getting, me just say this. It's getting worse. And I say this. Thank God for the courts to step in and stop this. Except stuff. that a lot of judges are being appointed. And I will leave you with that sorry, sorry note. Uh, yes, I understand. But it, it, you know what? The courts, the courts are fine 
at this moment, the courts are still okay. And you see these rulings that are coming down, stopping this, stopping the air pollution and the water uh, pollution and so on. Uh, the courts are doing the courts are doing their job. I wish the president of the United States was doing his job. Thank you, Frank, the healthcare detective and the health correspondent for Parade. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable health care to healthcaredetective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. And-